Uh, we begin tonight with some breaking news in national politics. A sitting United States senator, a Republican, the junior senator from the great state of Nevada, is resigning. Uh, this is a senator who barely a month and a half ago announced he would not be running for re-election next year. Uh, but now suddenly comes news that he will leave not in 2013, but in 12 days. This means that Nevada's Republican governor will appoint a replacement for the senator in Washington. The man resigning, of course, is Republican Senator John Ensign. Um, as a candidate for Senate and as a senator, John Ensign uh, was a family values Republican. He also lived at C Street, the pseudo church subsidized boarding house for conservative members of Congress run by the secretive religious organization known as The Family. In 1998, John Ensign demanded that President Clinton resign from office as president because of the Monica Lewinsky affair. In 2004, John Ensign crusaded to amend the U.S. Constitution to keep same-sex couples from being allowed to get married. Quoting him from the congressional record then, for those who say that the Constitution is so sacred that we cannot or should not adopt the federal marriage amendment banning marriage rights for gay people, I would simply point out that marriage and the sanctity of that institution predates the American Constitution and the founding of our nation. Uh, but then after all that, in 2009, John Ensign got caught cheating on his wife. Uh, he was stooping one of his own staffers who was married to another Ensign staffer, um, all the while um, he was, all, all of which was taking place while he was serving as the Republican Party's Senate campaign chairman. Incidentally, in that next election, the Republicans lost a ton of seats in the Senate. When uh, John Ensign's affair was outed, uh, the senator cut both of the staffers in, his, in this situation loose. He, he cut loose the one he was stripping, uh, and he cut loose the one that she was married to. Both of them had to leave John Ensign's employ. Uh, but when they did, Senator Ensign's parents cut their family a check for $96,000. His mom and dad did it. They're very wealthy, apparently. They own casinos. If that $96,000 was a severance payment to the senator's girlfriend and her husband, that could be construed as illegal. So a lawyer for the Ensign family claimed at the time that this $96,000 was really just a gift, a gift specifically structured as eight separate $12,000 payments to avoid paying the gift tax. Quote, his parents decided to make the gifts out of concern for, well, for the well-being of longtime friends during a difficult time. Despite that near $100,000 payoff, uh, the husband, whose wife Senator Ensign was shipping, complained publicly about the senator's behavior and about the financial straits of his family after both husband and wife lost their jobs with John Ensign. Last month, that same husband was indicted on charges of lobbying illegally, specifically lobbying Senator John Ensign illegally, lobbying Senator John Ensign illegally from a job that Senator Ensign arranged for him after that whole, I have to fire you and your wife because I'm stripping her thing. Uh, the husband was indicted, Senator Ensign was not indicted, but the FBI launched an investigation into this situation after the affair came to light. The Justice Department launched an investigation. The Senate launched an ethics investigation. Through it all, John Ensign never lost the public support of the Republican Party. But then last month, on his own terms, Senator Ensign announced his retirement. As you all know, campaigns are ugly enough today, and this campaign would be exceptionally ugly. And because of that, I don't want to put my family through that. And for these reasons, I will not be seeking re-election in 2012. That was barely a month and a half ago, uh, but now, unexpectedly, John Ensign has decided not to wait until the end of his term. He has all of a sudden decided that he is resigning right now, effective May 3rd. And a letter to the President of the Senate, who of course is Vice President Biden, uh, a letter that will be delivered tomorrow, Senator Ensign writes this, quote, while I stand behind my firm belief that I have not violated any law, rule, or standard of conduct of the Senate, and I have fought to prove this publicly, I will not continue to subject my family, my constituents or the Senate to any further rounds of investigation, depositions, drawn out proceedings, or especially public hearings. For my family and me, this continued personal cost is simply too great. He also said, quote, to the people of Nevada, I humbly say thank you for what you have given to me through the years. To my family, thank you for the support and love that you have shown me. To my staff, thank you for coming on this incredible journey with me and for standing by me despite the obstacles. Presumably that excludes the staff members he was either stooping 
or whose wife he was stooping, they got their own specific thank you, remember, from mom and dad? Last month, um, when Senator Ensign was asked whether that Senate ethics investigation, which had been underway and since October 2009, when he was asked whether uh, th that, that ethics investigation had anything to do with his decision to retire, Senator Ensign first told reporters this. He said, quote, if I was concerned about that, I would resign. And then he added this. I didn't break any ethics rules. I didn't break any of the laws. I didn't do any of those things. So resigning would be admitting guilt. Resigning would be admitting guilt. That's what he said last month. Now he's resigning. Joining us now is the man who broke the news of Senator Ensign's resignation this evening, John Ralston, columnist for the Las Vegas Sun and host of Face to Face with John Ralston. Uh, John, congratulations on this scoop and thanks for, thanks for being here tonight. Nice to be back with you, Rachel. Why is Senator Ensign resigning now? Why not back in March, six weeks ago, when he announced his retirement? Well, Rachel, as I've said many times, I mean, John Ensign's political career was over on June 16th, 2009, and you showed some of that video. He seemed to be the only one who did not know that, and he said be dragged kicking and screaming every step of the way. And from the moment he made that announcement, you know a lot of people wanted him out of there. It took the Ethics Committee, and I've just confirmed this right before coming on here, uh, to vote this week secretly, as they do, to move forward, perhaps with public hearings, and there's still a mountain of evidence Forget what the Department of Justice said. There's a, a mountain of evidence that he did a lot of things wrong. And for him to have to sit there in public hearings and then be sanctioned by the Ethics Committee, obviously it was too much for him. Either that or he was just doing it for his family, Rachel. Well, to, to be clear, this, what you've just learned tonight is that the Senate Ethics Committee was due to vote on whether or not to subject him to public hearings on these charges. Is that right? They voted, from what I understand, from some very good sources in Washington, they voted this week behind closed doors to move forward with public hearings, with a mountain of evidence, and there was going to be consideration of some very severe sanctions. You know, usually the Ethics Committee is, is derided as being toothless, but I think that after the Department of Justice dropped this, uh, that they were going to move forward. I think Ensign thought by making that announcement you referred to a month and a half ago that he would stop the Ethics Committee. Well, there's only one way to really stop the Ethics Committee, Rachel, and that's to get out of the Senate. Was Senator Ensign um, under any pressure that you know of from uh, Nevada Republicans or the National Republican Party that he should quit, that he should quit now, that somebody should be given the opportunity to be the incumbent Republican senator in Nevada uh, come, come 2012? There's no question that Republicans here and in Washington, D.C. wanted Ensign to get out of there so that Governor Brian Sandoval could appoint Dean Heller, uh, who is now running for that seat, to give him the title of senator when he was running. But Ensign has not listened to anyone but the voices in his own head for, for, uh, ever, for a long time now, Rachel. We know that. So that pressure seemed to be doing nothing. It has taken something at every step of the way to finally nudge him in the right direction. And as you, as you mentioned, Rachel, going through that, those facts, and they never, they never get old. The staggering hypocrisy of this man to continue to parade his family out, to invoke his family in that part of the statement that you read, it's just incredible. It's as if he has to be pulled back into reality by other people finally, and in this case, it was the Senate Ethics Committee voting. John, is there anybody else in contention for this appointment from Nevada's governor uh, besides Congressman Dean Heller? Is he considered to be pretty much a shoe in for this appointment now? Yeah, I think there's others, obviously, who would like to get the appointment, Rachel, but Brian Sandoval uh, is, and it, this is a tight-knit state. Brian Sandoval knows Dean Heller very well. They're friends, and, and, and people close to Sandoval are also close to Heller. It's a fait accompli. Heller is going to be appointed. The real interesting phenomenon here is that there's going to be a special election for Heller Seaton, our, our favorite person. I know one of yours, Sharon Angle, is, 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 is going to be involved in that. So, so Dean Heller, currently a member of the House, if he gets appointed to the Senate seat, which you say is a fait accompli, there has to be a special election uh, to fill his seat in Congress. Now, that isn't filled by an appointment. That's, there's got to be some sort of election process um, in that case. Do we know anything about when that election would happen, what the circumstances would be, how much control the party might have over who was able to run for that seat? 
Uh, well, we don't know any of those things for sure, and people have been scrambling. Even the people in the Secretary of State's office are not sure that the statutes are as clear as they should be here. This has never happened before in this state. What is clear is that the governor gets to set the election within a certain time period after he appoints Dean Heller to the Senate seat. But what people have concluded early on, and Rachel, nothing sure here, is that this could be a free-for-all where there is no primary for either party and anybody essentially can file, which is going to cause, if that, if that is what happens, that is going to be a spectacle unlike any we've seen here, and we've seen a few. <laughs> can you handicap um, mm -hmm. for us the prospects of Sharon Engel actually getting to go to Washington through this, through this process? I mean, as you said, we still don't know by what means exactly this seat is going to be filled, but if there is a free-for-all, how would that vote for Sharon Engel's chances versus the other means by which this election might be arranged? Yeah, if, if it was went to the party nominating committees, which is another possibility, although I can't find that in the statute that, that, that seems to be applicable here, although there's another statute that talks about that, there's no chance she would get it through the party's nominating committees. But in a free-for-all, she still does have a base of people who would die for Sharon Angle. The really interesting aspect here, though, Rachel, is if a bunch of Republicans get in, this is a traditionally Republican seat, no, no Democrat has ever held it since it was formed in 1981, that a Democrat who was run there before like Jill Derby, who came close uh, to beating Dean Heller a couple of times against a bunch of Republicans, uh, you're not going to need that high a percentage of votes to win. Now, again, all the caveats apply here. I'm not sure that's how it's going to work. But in a free-for-all, the Democrats have a shot at taking that seat. John Ralston, columnist for the Las Vegas Sun, host of Face to Face with John Ralston. And once again, the guy left to explain to the nation what the HE double hockey sticks is going on in Nevada politics, uh, which we couldn't tell without you, John. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Rachel. Again, the breaking political news tonight. Nevada Republican Senator John Ensign steps down unexpectedly. One year, 10 months, and five days after first admitting to an extramarital affair with an employee, which started a whole cascade of further difficult revelations for the family values senator. Uh, John Ralston just reporting on our, our air moments ago that the senator's resignation follows a vote, a reported vote in the Senate behind closed doors uh, that would have subjected Nevada Senator John Ensign to public hearings on those ethics charges that he had been facing uh, for many, many, many months in the Senate. Again, Nevada's Republican governor uh, will be appointing a temporary replacement for Senator Ensign. It is likely to be Congressman Dean Heller. Uh, that may give the Republican Party a leg up on holding on to that Senate seat in next year's elections. And I hope you will forgive me for just saying leg up. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> we'll be right back.